Hi everyone, Mosmo here from the Blue Root team. And today I'm going to talk about something that's very functional and, and necessary when setting up your CRM. I've recently seen people run into some issues when they don't set this up properly, and there's a lot of confusion about it in the Zoho ecosystem, and that is security and profiles and permissioning in the CRM. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about what is a role, what is a profile, and how to kind of break down some of the barriers with data sharing of records. As always, please like, comment, subscribe on our videos. We love hearing from you and we love chatting with you. Also, check out our inner circle below. It's a great place to meet other like-minded Zoho users. It's a one-time fee that we charge. We have all kinds of content in there, what our favorite apps are, what our favorite extensions are, what our favorite integrations are, what our favorite partners are. We've been doing this for 10 years. We've also just brought out all kinds of content that'll help you set up your system. If you're an admin looking for how-to guides on how to set up CRM or desk or documents on how to track your workflows or organize modules, we have all of that. We spent a lot of time putting it together. So check out our inner circle below and I'll see you in the video. All right, so let's get into this. So where you're gonna find all of this stuff is in the settings icon, and then it's under users and control. And so I'm gonna start off with security control to explain that, and then we're gonna move from there. So if we start at security control, you can see Zoho has some options here, profiles, roles, data sharing, and mail add-on users. So the best way to think of this is profiles, probably the easiest way is, you can see Zoho says here, it's a set of permissions dealing with module access and operations, set up access. So think of this as what someone is allowed to do. And so for example, if I open up this standard, you see here, they are allowed to view, create, or edit. They are allowed to view view, create, or edit. So when I say they, basically whenever you set up a user, you have to say what profile they are. It's a mandatory thing that Zoho makes you do. And so these profiles are really important if you're grouping your company into, for example, admin users, normal users, light users, right? And so when you group it like that, then you can think, okay, admin users are allowed to do most things or everything. Normal users are allowed to do most things, but not delete. And then light users are only allowed to view, not create, edit, or delete. Right, And so it's less so like they are the VP of this or they are the head salesperson. Profiles think of it more high level in terms of what they're doing. And so typically in an average company, there's only a few types of profiles, right? And when we set things up, it's usually like what I was just explaining, the admins, the normals, and the lights. And honestly, rarely do we get to the lights. It's usually admin and normals. So in order to create your own, you're actually gonna hit new, name it something, and then choose which one to clone. I typically always clone the admin one and then turn things off, it's up to you. And then you can go through with kind of a fine tooth comb here and choose what people are allowed to do. And so you could see here, okay, they're allowed to see the policy module, you can turn the whole module off. And when they do find something, they're allowed to view, create, edit, and delete. Now, my recommendation from years of doing this stuff and seeing all kinds of things, Depending on the type of user, if it's a normal everyday user, I'd recommend turning off delete. There are many business cases or, or arguments that could be had, uh, do I delete records in the CRM for cleanliness or not? I always err on the side of never delete data, move it around, store it, archive it, whatever, but you never know when you're gonna need it, right? And so I would always recommend turning off delete for these users. Obviously for admins, you can't because they're admins, but for the normal everyday user, I would recommend doing that. So you can go through here, turn that off for each of the modules, right? You can also say, well, this type of user will never need to see the call module, so you can just hide it. That's up to you. As you go further down, there are some import and export criteria here. If you were to have cloned this profile, you would see you could actually turn these off. Mass delete, I would turn off. Mass email, depending on the type of user, I see people turn this off. You may have someone who's upset with the company or whatever send out a mass email, and you may want to block that. But if it's a salesperson or whatever, you're probably going to want to have that on. So if your company is the type where you're like, nah, I'm okay with that, keep it on. So going further, this admin level permission, this is basically what you're seeing back here. So do you want to allow this person to add users, change compliance setting, add fields, customize fields, that's this one here, add portals, add portal users, manage the calendar booking. Probably not for the normal everyday user. You don't need them going into the back end of the system. 
even further, email and chat settings. This one's interesting and sometimes people just turn this off, but keep in mind, this is important, the email integration. So you're probably gonna want that on. And so that's so that their emails can come into the CRM. Manage automation, you may or may not want people to use that. That's up to you. Usually normal everyday users don't have that on. And most of this is usually turned off as well. Going down here, I would recommend keeping, uh, if they are having to look at invoices or edit invoices or whatever, I'd recommend keeping some of this on. If you want to allow them to sync with their Google, have this on. And then this one is also oftentimes important. So if you want to have code run in and out of their account, if you want to allow them to install an extension that helps them on their everyday stuff, I would keep this on. If you don't, they won't be able to. So that's a profile. What can they do? Can they add, can they create, can they delete? The next one is roles. So roles, you can see here, it goes right to share data. So this is what they're allowed to see. And so this is more VP of this, head of sales of that. And when you get to this section, you can actually see here, you can hit plus and you could put like, I don't know, advisor. And you could say they report to the manager and if you want to hit this, basically this will mean anyone in the advisor role will be able to see each other's data. If you don't check this, they won't. Now you hit save. So now if I go back to the roles, you'll see here we have CEO, manager, and advisor. And the way Zoho has set this up is it's a top-down approach. So if the CEO owns a record, the manager will not be able to see it, and nor will the advisor. But if the advisor owns a record, everyone above him or her can see it. You can add many people into every role. You can expand and collapse, right? And so it, it's kind of like your company hierarchy. And Zoho has some great tools if my video isn't sufficient in this question mark here. So now you have profiles, what they can do, roles, what they can see, and then you have data sharing settings. So this is probably the last important piece. When Zoho gives you the CRM, everything's private, as you see here. What that means is it follows that hierarchy you just saw, right? And so, for example, if someone owns a lead, and they're in the advisor, uh, the manager will be able to see it. But if a manager owns a lead, the advisor will not. And so let's say you came in here and said, no, I want everyone to see everything. You have a few options. You have public read only, which means if I'm the record owner, I can create, edit, whatever. If my colleague John looks at the lead, they can only read it, they can't touch it. Public read right means John can come into my lead and do whatever he wants. And then public read, write, delete is obvious. They can delete as well. But just so you know, in the profile, that will override this. So um, if you said in the profile, they can't delete, this is basically null, right? So this is something to keep in mind. I mean, the easiest way, what I see a lot of companies doing these days, it's just public read, write for everything. It's like, it's a CRM, we're made to collaborate, let's collaborate. Now, there are obviously business situations and business cases when that doesn't make sense, right? Typically around the revenue module, deal, opportunity, policy, whatever it is, where people are gonna wanna be private. And so you can just keep that one private and make everything else public read right. That's totally up to you. Now, let's say you say, well, it's private unless this one use case. And so that's when you get into these sharing rules and I'm gonna create a separate video on the sharing rules because it can get pretty intense, but here's the high level. The sharing rule basically breaks down that wall of privacy. So you could say, well, Massimo and Jenna are two employees at the same level. They cannot see each other's data. However, Massimo and Anna, who are also at the same level, can see each other's data. And so that's when you make these sharing rules which break down the barriers. So there may be use cases where it's like, everything's private, except for the West Coast VP is allowed to see the East Coast data, right? And so that's when you can get into these sharing rules and they get pretty intense. So like I said, I'm gonna make another video, but please like, comment, subscribe on this one. Let me know if you like this type of content. And also check out our inner circle. I mentioned it in the beginning, but it's getting a lot of traction and we have some documents in there that talk about roles and profiles and all kinds of exclusive content in there. Thanks for watching.